So with Black Friday and Cyber Monday pretty much all wrapped up for another year, I wanted to go through the tools that I've picked up myself and the reasons why I've picked them up. But before I even take a look at any of those, I'd like to ask you a question. What did you pick up on Black Friday? Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you pick up anything you've been looking for for quite some time and make a good saving? Or did you find it just a little bit lackluster this year? Let me know in the comment section because I would love to know what you've picked up for yourselves. So for me, my main focus is on three key tools. Now I'm using Bricks Builder to do a lot of different things at the moment, and I wanted to improve the tech stack that I have, which is basically at this point in time, just Bricks Builder. But I wanted to make things just a little bit quicker, easier and smoother to work with. So there are three things that I picked up to kind of complement this tech stack. First and the kind of backbone of everything that I'm doing is the core framework. Now I opted for the core framework because A, you can test this out to start off with, with just Gutenberg natively, but if you want to use it alongside Bricks Builder, which is what I wanted to do, there is an add-on from the core framework marketplace and that's for Bricks Builder. And this is what I picked up in their Black Friday deal, which is currently still running, which gives you 20% off. So if you wanted to grab this, now's probably a good time to do it. And the Bricks Builder sort of integration just does that. It integrates integrates the core framework with Bricks Builder and just makes the whole process of working with it just a little bit smoother and easier. If you've never used a framework or you've never looked into a framework or you don't even know what a framework is, let me quickly just touch upon what it does and then I'll kind of cover this in a future video if you'd like to see more about working with frameworks with tools like Bricks Builder, let me know again in the comment section below. So fundamentally, it does one simple thing. It streamlines and speeds up the design and development process when using, in this case, bricks. But you can use frameworks with pretty much anything. So for example, if you want to set up a global color palette, well, you can do that inside here. And you can have all of this generated in a matter of seconds. You want to have standardization for your font scaling, and you want to have smooth scaling as opposed to jumping between each different sort of point, well, you can use this to do it. Now, yes, you can do all of this manually, but a framework just makes this quicker and easier and much more streamlined. So let me just quickly show you, and I'm talking very quickly, how the core framework actually integrates and how you can set things up and how much easier it is to work with. So I'll jump into my dashboard, come up to the core framework and open that up. And this is basically your core framework. And this is broken down into a couple of different sections on the left hand side. The key things you're going to want to set up your color, typography, spacing and so on. So for example, if we take a look at the colors, you can see we've got our brand color set up inside here. And if we open these up, by dropping the arrow down, you can see we can set this up to generate any utility classes. We can enable dark mode and set up colors for alternative colors inside the dark mode. We can also get this to automatically generate shades of our main primary, secondary, tertiary colors and so on. So if you're like me, you like to have shades as an option. This is a really quick and easy way of doing it. So for example, we may want to have nine shades. We'll set that to nine and we'll say the same for our light and dark shades. And now you can see we have nine varying shades and we can hover over any of these and you can see it gives us the color information and the variable for it. These are the CSS variables you'd use as part of your design. And if we scroll on through, you can see we've got background colors, text colors, base colors, neutrals, statuses, and so on. And you can easily add more. So you may want to have a fourth color as part of your primaries. Well, click and you can see you can add a fourth color in, choose the color you want, give it a variable name, and you can also see you can choose from various different color modes. So HSLA, if you want to work with hex values, RGB, RGB with alpha, and so on, all those are available to you inside here. And again, you can drop the arrow down the right-hand side and generate your shades, your transparent, various tints, and so on. So this is nice and easy. Let's get rid of this. We'll click these little three dots, and we'll delete those from there. And we'll say, yep, we are sure we're going to get rid of it. Coming into typography, for example, you can see we can set up our typography setting, basic kind of values, your minimum and your maximum values, and the scale ratio you want to work with. And this gives you a nice fluid typographic scale. Again, you've got online tools that allow you to do this, but using a tool like this framework just integrates everything a little bit more seamlessly and makes it quicker and easier to work with. And as you can see, we can change between the scale values. So if you want to have larger or smaller jumps between each of the different values, you can do that inside here, right the way up to these major six and so on. And you can see there's our base value, which is what we'd use for our standard kind of text. And we've got small, extra small, large, and so on. Very easy to work with. And you can see we can set up our minimum and our maximum. So you may have a small font. You want to set your minimum to be 18 and your maximum to be 22, for example, and you'll see how that will affect things visually in real time. Pretty cool. 
If you come down underneath, you can see you've also got your heading set up. And what these do is they use the variables that have been set up as part of this typography scale. So everything becomes kind of fluid and it'll flow down through your overall framework. Coming down, you can see you've also got your line heights. You can set those inside you and any text modifiers for things like uppercase, lowercase, and so on, including the weight of the fonts. And you can stack these different variables, these global classes and so on, on top of each other inside a builder like Bricks. So there's lots of options inside here. Same thing kind of goes for spacing. You can see we've got this scale on the left-hand side, and you can see we get a visual representation of what it looked like based upon mobile and tablet and desktop kind of views and so on. And again, we can set anything up if we want to go outside of these kind of basic starting points. Components is pretty useful and pretty cool. This is where you can create component pieces that you can use and they'll be standardized. For example, a standard button, a standard badge, links, input fields, and so on. And you can edit any of these and change anything and add additional values to this if you want to. If you want to change, for example, what happens with the cursor when you mouse over it, well, you can change that from there. If you want to add another value in, you can click add another property, choose what you want, set the value to it. And again, we can use those variables that are part of the overall uh, sort of core framework. Pretty cool and pretty expressive and how we can work with this. And then once you've done that, you can come over to the left-hand side and you can adjust your modifiers for your hover, your focus, and so on. There's so many different options here. And the same thing goes. We don't have to stick with these. We can easily create our own. So if you want to add something completely different, start from scratch, you can do it inside here. Layouts, this is where you can handle things like your rows for your grid layouts, your automatic columns for your column layouts, the flex layouts. So instead of having to remember the different values and kind of go through all that, you can simply use a global class and just pull everything in directly from inside you. It's pretty cool and very powerful. Design, again, we've got kind of things that fall outside that are more design oriented, things like radius borders, uh, your sort of your border thickness and styles and colors and all those kinds of things. And again, where applicable, you've got these options for the variables your borders, there's so many options inside your shadows. So what this gives you is complete design consistency by simply using these variables in your design. Now, speaking of that, how do you do it? Well, let's go into one of our pages and we'll just create something simple like a section, a container. It doesn't really matter too much what's going on. I just literally want to show you the basics of how you can use this. Let's add a heading in. We'll position that inside our container, okay. So now we've got our basic styling set up. So this typographic kind of scale will pick up automatically depending upon the size of the heading that we set. We can override any should we want to, but this is picking up those default values. Now let's say, for example, we go to our container and we want to add some spacing to this. Well, we could if we wanted to, Typically, come into your layout and you'd start typing in and you'd set up what values you want, M's, REMs, percentages, all those kinds of things. But with Core Framework and the Core Framework plugin added into Bricks, all we need to do is right click and we get this little pop out and now we can adjust our spacing. So you may say we want to put spacing of 3XS or in other words, 3 extra small, or we want to put large spacing inside there for our margins. We'll select that from the list. We can, if we want to, link those together. We can link all sides. You can see that will pick up the kind of spacing inside there. Same thing goes for padding. We can right click. We can say we want to put padding in on one side or we can link them together. We'll do the same thing, right click and choose the padding we want. And you can see that adds the padding in and every time we add that same variable and that same value, it'll always pick up exactly that value. It's that simple. We create these kind of globalized classes that we can use. And we can use those inside our editor. But we also have the option to add things inside the sort of actual global classes itself. So you can see by clicking inside there, we now have all of these different global classes we can sort of access your buttons and all those kinds of things. So everything we want is inside you. And you can see if we hover over one and it has some relevance, it will show us what it'll look like. So our cards, for example, select fields, input fields, and so on. If you want to set a primary background color, and you can see all our different shades are available by using these global classes. Now there's tons and tons of different classes. You don't have to remember every single one of these. You know, you can use what you want Kind of use this as simple or as complex as you want. You can even use the Core Framework plugin and strip out all the things you have no use for to make everything just a little bit more lightweight. This is really, really simple and basic kind of stuff that I'm talking about here. Now, speaking of those colors we took a look at earlier, let's say we want to change the color of our heading. Let's select it, come to our styles, come to our typography, click on the color, and you'll see there's all our colors available. And each one of these is using that variable. So we can select one, and you see there's our variable primary L3, or light three. 
you want to have the primary, the standard kind of color, you can do that inside here as well. And the more you add in for the tints and shades and so on, the more you will see inside this color panel. So you can get as creative or keep it as simplistic as you want to. Same thing goes for things like font sizes. You can right click and you can see we can use the typography, we can use spacing, design, color system. All these options are available inside you. And this is literally just scratching the surface of how the core framework can speed up and integrate directly into a tool like Bricks. So that's literally the basics of working with something like the Core Framework. But like I said at the top of this video, if you'd like me to cover this in more detail and show you how to get started using things like this, let me know in the comment section down below and I will create some content for you. Next, I wanted to have some kind of template library that I could use alongside Core Framework. And this is where I took a look at Bricks Maven. Now, Bricks Maven have multiple different versions. You can have it with plain old CSS, you can have it with ACSS, and you can have it with Core Framework. I picked up the Core Framework version. Now, you may be asking, why do I want something like this when I could design everything myself, especially using something like Core Framework? For speed, I create a lot of video tutorials and I need to quickly be able to put designs together and Historically, I've done this manually and it just takes so much time. Whereas I can take something like the Bricks Maven template library, I can build things out very, very quickly, and I can have a test site up and running with filler content to start working with creating these tutorials and testing things out in a matter of minutes. I also create lots of landing pages and things like that for different courses, different products and things that I sell. And I also work with clients and sometimes it's nice just to have something you can quickly throw a design together in and you can have it up online in a matter of minutes as opposed to days. And looking through all the different options, Bricks Maven got a lot of love. And to be honest, with around 500 different layouts, there's probably enough inside you to do what I want to do. Is it the only one I'll work with? Probably not, but for now, this covers what I wanted to do. And again, the nice thing with this is because it's a Bricks library, it integrates directly into the Bricks templating system. So let me show you how easy it is and where you set things up. So once you purchase the Bricks Maven library, all you need to do is come into the template section, you'll drop in the link to the remote URL templates that they've got, and they'll include a password. You simply pop that in there, hit save settings, and you can use that now as a template library inside Bricks. So now all we need to do is open up a Bricks page, and we can choose to include the library from here and using the templates, or we can come out to the top and choose the templates option from there. Either will work. We choose remote templates, and now we've got all our templates available inside here. Now, like I say, because this is working with the core framework, a lot of the variables and things that are part of the core framework will be included as these designs. So it's very easy to be able to customize things from the core framework side and then have them display inside here the way that we want. So for example, let's go and take a look at a hero section. Let's grab this one. We'll insert that into our design. Now it says, this includes a theme style. Would you like to import it? I'm going to say no for this example. So let's insert the template. And you see now we've got our template pulled in. And if we take a look, you can see this has picked up our accent colors and our kind of primary color and so on. So for example, if we click on this button, we take a look now on the left-hand side at our global classes. You can see this is set to .btn, which is one of those components that are built as part of the core framework and also set to be small. So we can change any of these if we want to. We might say we want this to be large. Let's just say, there we go. And we now have a large button. So we don't need to worry about styling this and editing this. And because it's all globally set up, we can change those values inside the global settings if we need to. Otherwise, everything will scale nice and fluidly. So it's really simple to work with. And I can have something, like I say, up and running in a matter of minutes. So for example, let's say I want to change the background image on here. I can click to include a new image. We'll grab this one, insert it. Give it a second or so, and we now have a great looking heading that I can start working with. I can customize the form if I want to have this as a sort of landing page to sell things. You kind of get the idea. But the fact is it integrated into the core framework or integrated with the core framework just means that everything is so much quicker and easier to work with. Plus, all the mobile responsive side of things is already catered for, so I don't have to worry about that when I want to run something up very, very quickly and quickly customize it. And as we can see on the front end of the site, when we take a look at it, everything looks pretty cool. The hover state is set up on the button, any animations, everything is in place. Like I say, it's just super quick and easy, and this just saves me so much time. Now, I'm not really one for advocating the use or the need for additional plugins when it comes to working with Bricks Builder. But there was one that caught my attention for various different reasons, and that was Bricks Extras. So I grabbed the lifetime deal on this yesterday. I've still to play about with it, but so far, the things that I've seen really have piqued my interest. One of the key things is how the dynamic side of things has been expanded with Bricks Extras. Plus, if you like to use things like the accordion and so on, this has a 
much nicer accordion setup which works with various different responsive layouts a little bit better than what we have with the native bricks. Sure, that'll change and with some effort, you can easily update things, but sometimes you wanna do things quickly. And like I say, this really interested me. So if we take a look at some of the features, we've got things like dynamic tables. So if you want to use ACF, for example, with a repeater region, and you wanna display that data in a table format, the searchable and filterable, this is pretty cool. You can use this to do exactly that. Things like modals, you can create modals inside, you know, Bricks itself, but this allows you to very easily pull in dynamic content in various different ways. And speaking of dynamic content, there's also a bunch of additional sort of conditions that you can apply to various different situations, things like WooCommerce and so on, that open up even more functions and possibilities when it comes to working with dynamic content inside Bricks Builder, which anybody that knows me knows I absolutely love anyway. Now, there's lots of things that I have no real interest for, like the burger trigger and so on. But another thing that I like about this is that you can use this to style and customize the facets as part of Grid Builder WP, which are notoriously a little bit more complex to fiddle about with than when you want to bring them in line with the design. You have an option inside you to make it much easier. And the same thing goes for Fluent Forms. This gives you the ability to easily customize Fluent Forms inside Bricks using this particular plugin. So there's lots of different options inside you that I think are worth taking a look at from my point of view. And like I say, I'm not trying to sell this anyway. I've got no affiliate links to anything I'm talking about in these, this video. Everything here, if you buy it, you buy it off your own back, I get nothing whatsoever at all. And I bought everything that we're talking about here. So this is just some of the options you have and you've also got things like creative tools. So we've got additional query loop options. So if you want to, then, and there's great documentation, help videos and everything with this. And that's one thing I really do look for when I take a look at buying anything like this. But there's also more option things like the media player, media playlist and so on that are coming soon. So I'm interested to see if this allows us to kind of replace something like Presta Player. If it does, that's one less plugin I've got to have and I can just use this and give me the media controls that I'm looking for. But also we've got things like Pro Tabs, Read More and Less. Uh, your sort of like your facet style, like I said, this gives you those all, all those options to customize the look and feel. And also, if we take a look at some of the other features, like for example, the conditions, you can see we've got more conditions for things like easy digital downloads, member press, and so on, but also general conditions and WooCommerce conditions. So if you want to, you can see we've got tons of different options inside you and they're all enableable and disableable. So if you don't wanna have all these different options available, turn off the ones you don't want, turn on the ones you do want. And you can access that incredibly easy by coming into the bricks extra section and you see there's our conditions, everything inside there and you can see there are an awful lot. The same thing goes for your elements, you can see you can enable or disable any of these and everything has documentation next to it. But that's basically my new tech stack when it comes to working with Bricks Builder. Have you invested into more tools for Bricks? If you have, like I say, let me know in the comment section down below because I would love to hear your findings and what you've bought into this year on Black Friday or Cyber Monday or basically any time whatsoever. Let me know. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats and until next time, take care.